Good morning, uh, Dr. Kalpana. Thank you so much for joining the personal branding series that I run on my blog. Uh, thank you for taking the time to do this. This is really a thought leadership series I run with personalities who have uh, gone about building how you know their personal brands, and I want uh, them to talk about their experience and their journey. So uh, before we get started, if you could quickly introduce yourself for our audience. Okay, I'm uh, Kalpana. Name. Um, I've been an officer of the Indian Administrative Service for uh, about uh, over 33 years now and worked in a uh, uh, multitude of sectors, land, energy, education, sports, training. Now I'm looking after uh, animal husbandry and uh, public grievances and fisheries in the capacity of additional chief secretary. So that is one uh, aspect of me. Right. The other aspect that is as a bureaucrat or a civil servant. The right. other aspect is that of an academic. Right. So that's the second hat. And uh, I've been a learner throughout, even after right. joined this, I joined the service. Right. Uh, mid career, I took a break and did a master's and then a PhD in public policy right. from IIM Bangalore. Right. My research interests have continued to continue to stay with me right. and uh, la again land management, public right. private partnerships, uh, right. skill development. These are my areas of research interest. Right. I also kind of uh, serendipitously I evolved as a speaker. Right. Uh, I have somewhere along the line uh, around the time when I was doing my PhD. Right. I realized to my surprise and delight that when I spoke, people listened and right. I had this uh, capacity for uh, translating complex ideas in a simple way so as to get across in a brief speech. So right. other than research, which is usually directed towards the academic community, right. I also try to address the general public, especially youth through right. my speeches and which is what you would have seen on my blogs Absolutely. and my YouTube videos. Absolutely. I also have a third hat as a volunteer mm -hmm. and uh, I am an advisor to Akshay Patra Foundation and right. several other uh, NGOs and nonprofits, some of which uh, I have been associated with from say for the last 30 years. For example, the Swami right. Vivekananda Youth Movement in Mysore, right. where we first met when I was a uh, trainee officer, we call it IAS probationer in Mysore, and the right. association has continued throughout. So basically this family is I, uh, my husband, my two children, mm -hmm. my son is uh, just about to complete his uh, super specialization in neurosurgery. My wow. daughter is a lawyer in the corporate mm -hmm. sector. So that about sums up me. <laughs> I think that's like a such an impressive and you know wide ranging set of you know uh, achievements. So in fact, that's also the reason why I, I selected. I wanted to have you on this program. So how do you you know what you whatever you have done is really all that sums up your personal brand. So how do you define it? If you were to define who is Dr. Kalpana Gopalan, what's your what's your uh, definition of personal branding? I never thought of it really as branding. Of any right. sort until you use that phrase in your <laughs> emails. I right. think that cheekily came out even in my replies to you. Right, right, right. Um, I took to social media as uh, more as a method, uh, a mode of sharing, right, uh, mm. than you know as a mode of projection. So right. You can see the difference. Mm. Um, somewhere uh, I realized that especially when I was doing my PhD, I realized how fortunate I have been because mm. I had this opportunity of interacting with the most incredible minds, right. some of whom you may not know, but uh, they are really wonderful, both wonderful human beings and wonderful, beautiful minds in the real sense of the word. Right. Uh, right. Concordia University in uh, Canada. 
My another supervisor from McGill University in Canada, Dr. Madhav Badami. My own uh, that supervisor, that is, mm. to have the dissertation advisory committee. So my guide, yeah. my PhD yeah. guide is Dr. Right. Shabal Roy uh, okay. from IIM Bangalore. Incredible okay. human beings. So I felt that I had been blessed that mm. I could interact with such minds. And somewhere my way of giving back would be right. to share that knowledge and expertise and experience that I gained. The IAS gave me a lot of real experience, field level right. experience. So I thought right. the best way in which I can give back to the community is to share. And I took mm. to social media chiefly in that right. uh, for that reason. Right. So I did not think of it as branding. Um, right. In fact, I have a different take on it. If I can take a little more time Absolutely, uh, please. to answer your question. Absolutely. Uh, when we speak of brand, hmm. to use that lingo, right. I feel that there are three aspects to any individual. Right. right. That one is what the show. Hmm. The first S is the show, which right. is the image that you project. How Absolutely. to dress. Correct. How Absolutely. to move with people, right. your own presence in the social media. All yes. that is part of your image, Correct. and uh, which I call show, just to mm. use a you know simple term. Right. The, the, the next layer, the next mm. inner layer, because every individual, if you peel her like an onion, right. the next layer is what I call structure, only to make right. it simple, which right. is basically your words and your deeds. Right. What you speak and what you do, your actions. Yeah. Which is, in fact, a, a deeper layer, something more mm. important than merely the image that you project. Absolutely. And the third and the final layer, which Absolutely. is the core human being, is what I call the substance. That is the third right. S, which right. is what you really are, your right. thoughts, your right. inner being, and what right. only you or somebody very intimately known to you right. would probably realize. So uh, I feel that these three should be al in alignment. Absolutely. Three S's, the substance, yeah. the structure and the show should be in alignment. Uh, increasingly in a world of social media, it is easy to be misaligned and still project. An image. Right. Because right. you see so little of a human being, our right. uh, attention spans are also small. Yes. The yes. time which we can spare before we began, I said, oh, I have to leave for a meeting. So Correct. the time yeah. which we are able to spare interacting with each other, which Absolutely. was not the case when I was a child, probably yeah. when you were a child either. We had much right. more time for each other. But exactly. in social media, it's very quick. And nobody yeah. wants to see a video, you know, which goes on for, say, one and a half hours. Mm. So you, you communicate very quickly. Good. Right. I also developed that skill of, as I told you, Translating yeah. complex ideas with brevity, Correct. but still that should be in alignment. Absolutely. So if any of these are misaligned, yeah. You and most uh, frequently it is the show which we are able to do well, but the mm. substance we don't work on. I yeah. think I started from the other end, as it yeah. were, that right. the focus was on the substance, right. and somewhat being an officer of the government on my yeah. actions, yeah. and very, very little, I confess. Probably mm -hmm. I was not right in doing so, but uh, mm -hmm. my time was different, so very less on the show. So right. what happened on the image building side was more as a matter of uh, a kind of side effect of the sharing, which, you know, I right. started doing. So it's a very think, long answer to your question. No, no, I think this is brilliant because you answered the following questions as well, which was really about the process or the journey which you took. So if you were to reflect on your life, I mean, obviously it was a very intentional move uh, in some sense because you joined the government service, then you did your research and PhD and you've been involved with uh, a lot of volunteering. So what were some of those building blocks of, you know, as you went about that journey, how did you think about, uh, was, I mean, I, I know it, it was planned in some sense, but it was also unplanned in some sense. So how did you think about your journey? You're perfectly right when you say it was both planned and unplanned. Uh, partly deliberation, but there was very little of it. Hmm. Mostly serendipity. Okay. So okay. Uh, the building blocks are not those which you think. Getting hmm. into the IAS or doing a PhD. Those were not the choices. Got it. Got right. it. Uh, the real choice 
or the first choice where I can really say I put my foot down was in doing my MA, my okay. master's, right. uh, which, uh, which I think was a very seminal moment in my life. Mm. And probably this will resonate with many women. Mm. Uh, I was doing my BA finals. Mm -hmm. My family always prized education. So right. I had always been told that, you know, uh, this is a value. Mm. That is how we grew up right. in the family. Mm. And then uh, it's so, and I was just studying for my BA finals, but what? Very well meaning. A little, uh, old, uh, so this was in the 80s, early 80s. Yeah. He decided that I should get married. Mm. And uh, so my, now if education was a value, there was yeah. also that respect for elders, which is another value. So Correct. my parents simply deferred after, you know, bringing me up on a lifetime of, you know, education, this thing, all, you know, the, all that, the study and all those things, like, yeah. you know, the Indian parent. Right. And suddenly, you know, they capitulated and said, oh, yeah, she should get married. <laughs> and uh, it was a shock. And right. I, it was the first time that I really had a conflict with my parents. Mm. And... Uh, it was not that I fought, but mm. uh, I, I still recall that I would be pacing up and down in my room studying for right. my BA finals. Right. And uh, suddenly I would be overcome and I would rush out of the room. And whoever I could find in, in the family, I would say that I must do my MA. I must do my MA. Right. Uh, so it was, I couldn't think beyond that, you see, that right. my, my horizon was doing, I couldn't envisage life without right. doing an MA and right. um, uh, anyway all's well that ends well uh, my parents I was able to prevail on Great. them and I did do my MA and then I did another MA and then okay. I did a master's in public policy mid-career and then I did a PhD so Wonderful. that that choice which I made which yeah. is very, very trivial today if you right. think a girl child from an urban educated family doing an MA is not par for the course. Right. But that was the real choice. Mm. The IAS itself was a matter of chance. So I mm. just want to you know contrast the choices and chances how they happen. That the choice right. was actually the masters. But the right. chance was that I uh, drifted into the PhD program in IIT Madras once I completed my masters. Right. But um, the, at that time, they did not have a guide in my particular area of research interest. Okay. It was okay. after all an institute of technology and yeah. my area of interest was social sciences and humanities. I topped the a common examination for research admission, which okay. is the equivalent of JEE for research in those days for all the IITs together. Right. Uh, I chose IIT Madras, joined, but since I couldn't find a guide, Mm. IAS is the fallback option. Okay. So that was a more a matter of chance. Great. Great. Uh, similarly, if you look at the next building block, which is the doctorate, which you mentioned. Right. Uh, I got selected for the master's in public policy from by the government. That was a government sponsored program in IIM Bangalore. Right. So right. that was again a matter of chance. Right. Of course, there was an element of choice that I did decide to go, but it largely happened by chance. Right. The PhD came a little later that after I completed my master's hmm. in public policy, I came back to the government. Right. I am right. decided to float a new PhD program in public policy. And they right. wrote me asking me to apply. Okay. And that is how I, you know, got in. And, uh, and so it's a kind of, you know, intermixing of choices and chances. Absolutely. That uh, so there was a deliberation, but hmm. it was also serendipity. Fantastic. That's a great explanation. And I think related to that, I wanted to ask you, like, I mean, you are a mother, you are, you know, obviously a public figure, you're a speaker, you've done multiple roles. So obviously, is there, you know, some, some ways you can explain what are some of the things you gained and what are some things which you lost along this journey of personal brand building? Okay. Uh, I go with the flow, so I can't really say that I lost something. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, it used to be that when I was younger, more uh, 
a new entrant into the service, a new mother. Right. Uh, at that time, I had organized and compartmentalized my life a little more. Right. But uh, the life of an IAS officer and the life of a mother too is hmm. one where you know suddenly there may be a crisis, then there would be a long hiatus when things are smooth, and then something sudden again erupts. So right. Right. somewhere along the line, I uh, learned to go with the flow. Mm-hmm. So that is what I basically do. That you know, when there is a sudden, uh, when the maybe when the home demands my attention, I give my full attention to the home. When right, the right. when work demands my attention, I give my full attention to the work. And what I do, I'm completely focused on. Okay. So that is the way it. You look at. Yeah. That's the way I do my structure. I don't really structure it. Not okay. in the last many years, at least. Okay, fantastic. And you know, if you were to uh, you know think about advice for someone who's starting out their journey as a personal brand, if they are you know very young, and you've been talking to a lot of youth and coaching them as well. So, what's your advice for people like that? How should they be thinking about their personal brand or their journey? Uh, I think that uh, you know, both your personal growth, which mm. you may define as wealth or career success or mm. you know having however whatever pushes your buttons right it's one very aspe- important aspect of life right so i don't think we should expect from uh, uh, the youths today any element of self sacrifice mm. it is not there are people who can do it but that right. is not everybody mm. so there is that aspect of it Right. But there's other very important aspect which we tend to lose sight of is uh, can you see me? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah. Which we tend to lose sight of is uh, personal social responsibility. Right. Which is right. very important to me because I think all of us, by merely being a member of society, right, we we owe something. Right. The structure which we live in. Right. So what I always advise you is that. It is not necessary that you should become, you know, you re- renounce everything and then go and serve. Yeah. Uh, you know, you become a sannyasi and uh, you know you preach. Not yeah. not required. You yeah. do your career. You mm. focus on your career, but mm. give some time mm. every day or every week or every month what you can do yeah. to someone else. Mm. And here also I would say that. It is not always necessary that you should join some organization. People keep writing to me saying that we want to join with you, we want to collaborate with you and do something. Right. It it may or may not be feasible. I'm not saying group work does work, but yeah. it's not always feasible. So okay. the thing to do is that you look around you. Mm. Who is most in need of help? Right. Just help them. Mm. Then it will grow from there. Yeah. And what do you? That is home. Got it. You, give. you may not earn something out of it, 
you will be learning something else out of it. So Absolutely. this is basically how I have done. I have, I have chosen knowledge, which is right. my public good, so to say, which right. I'm good at and I can share. I know enough to make it right. worthwhile. And right. then it is quite easy to fit something into your schedule when you're re really interested in it. Fantastic. So that is what I would like to share. Fantastic. And you mentioned, you know, some of the guides who have been helping you and, you know, is there some couple of names which come to your mind who are role models of personal brands who have and what are some of the values you see in them? <laughs> the, uh, these are not well known people, even the people right. whom I spoke of, uh, Dr. Right. Shamal Roy, who right. is uh, from IIM Bangalore, was right. my PhD guide, a right. wonderful human being. I also right. <coughs> So happens they are all academics. Right. Uh, they are reticent people. Right. Uh, so they may not, you know, have branded themselves. Right. But when you are interacting, hmm. they leave a mark on you which stays for hmm. life. Right. Which, you know, uh, far more than, uh, you know, being a, a media star is right. something. But other than that, I have learned from so many, many uh, people whom I interact but hmm. in the course of my life. Right. So, uh, thinking of one, uh, that is Mallika. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I don't have a picture readily available. No Mallika problem. I met in uh, Belga when mm -hmm. I was on a tour. Uh, she works as a buggy driver in okay. early society in Belga. Mm -hmm. now, Mallika lost her uh, husband when in her early 20s. She was mm -hmm. left with a boy and a girl. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for her, the KLE Society took her under their wing. They have a women's wing. They, so they took her under their care. They trained mm -hmm. her in driving. And today mm -hmm. she drives around. Okay. So when, uh, you know, I generally when I meet somebody, I chat. So I was, mm -hmm. she was taking me around in the buggy and that's how I got to know her story. And mm -hmm. then I told her that, you know, I want a photograph with you. Mm. Uh, I wish I had been prepared with that picture, but let us see. Maybe I'll send, if I can, I'll send it to you. Sure. So, and then she to told me that, okay, I'll uh, you know, pose for a photograph with you, but you must be ready at 6.30 a.m. Mm. Because I have to start driving at 7. So she gave me an appointment basically for 6.30 in the morning. And the picture which I'll share with you shows me, me in my nighty and uh, Malika all dressed and smiling and ready and we are together in a photograph. She right. overcame that adversity and for me, especially for women, I think overcoming limitations mm. is a very important theme in life yeah. because it is not that all of us have, but yeah. even the well-educated upper class women have mm. some kind of restriction placed on them. Partly mm. by themselves, partly by the people around them. Right. And so, uh, Malika for me, for example, is a very important example of how uh, mm. you overcome the limitations which your circumstances have placed on you. So there are right. so many people like that, that, uh, you know, I can remember who have touched my life and then right. moved on. Got it. Got it. So um, as we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you, you know, what is your recipe or mantra for personal branding success? I know you mentioned go with the flow, but is there anything else you would like to share? This is what I feel that, uh, as I told you, that your inner core being mm. and the external image that you project and what right. you say and do in the meanwhile, those right. should be in alignment. Otherwise, mm. somewhere along the line, you may be able to project a good image, but somewhere mm. That misalignment will start showing in cracks, either in your personality or in your work, or right. merely in the image that you project yourself. So start right. with that substance that only I will know whether mm. I what I am speaking to you today is the truth or not. Right. There's right. no way for you to know, but yeah. I do know. Yeah. And if I am not, then somewhere there would be a crack. It would be nice maybe for a half hour interview, but right. you can sustain it throughout life. So the exactly. key to a sustainable personal brand is mm. that the show and the structure and the substance are all in alignment. I think that is basically what I'd like Fantastic. to share. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time. I know you have a very busy schedule. Appreciate you doing this for me and I will uh, keep you posted when this goes live. Please. And I'll share that picture with you if you can put it yes. somewhere along the interview. Yes. Yes.
I will do that. Please hold on.